Ah, Maryland. Home to blue crabs, Ocean City, the Appalachian Mountains, and one of America's most gerrymandered states. In Maryland, there are eight congressional districts, seven of which have a Democrat representative with only one Republican district. Now, why is this? The simple answer is gerrymandering. Wait, I've heard of something like this before, but what exactly is gerrymandering? Good question. You see, gerrymandering is the process where a state official manipulates district lines to give more power or influence to their particular political party. To put this into perspective, let's take a look at Maryland. Here, look at a map of Maryland made by the Center for American Progress that has no Republican districts. If we take the exact same map and make it slightly more accurate to Maryland's political layout, then, just like that, it would give Maryland two to three more Republican districts. Wow. Now that you've seen how Maryland's layout of districts are, let's take a trip down memory lane. Tim, take it away. Oh yes, I remember. In 2012, Governor Martin O'Malley, along with his cabinet, moved over 700,000 people. In the 6th district alone, 350,000 mostly Democrat voters were moved. This ensured that all of the districts had a diluted Republican voter population and more seats would go to the Democrats. This was far greater than the needed population shift. This was Maryland's first major gerrymander district, being named Merrymandering by the New Republic magazine. Later, in a 2018 interview with USA Today, O'Malley admitted he had gerrymandered, but, and I quote, I hope the Supreme Court ends partisan gerrymandering. Unfortunately for O'Malley's wishes, a 2018 redistricting attempt by Maryland's 6th District was appealed by lawyer Linda Lamone, claiming that this redistricting attempt fell under the category of affirmative gerrymandering. Lamone's appeal was even argued before the Supreme Court in a case known as Rucho vs. Common Cause. I mean, this, this was actually two uh, linked cases that could have been a huge ruling that could have put for the first time limits on to what extent state lawmakers can take into account uh, their own partisan preferences when they're drawing electoral districts. Uh, and this could have been huge, it could have affected elections for years to come. Five out of the nine justices then argued that it was not their duty acting as the Supreme Court to enforce anti-gerrymandering lawmaking. Rather, that it was the state's duty to speak up against gerrymandering, as well as undo gerrymandered districts at their own discretion. Current Governor Larry Hogan is vocal about the issues of Maryland. He said that gerrymandering was an issue on both sides of the political spectrum that needs to be amended ASAP. But what is it about gerrymandering that makes it so bad? Well, for starters, gerrymandering is an unconstitutional act, which in turn damages the integrity of democracy in Maryland. To put this simply, Former governors in Maryland have given an unfair advantage to Democrats to win the majority of Maryland's seats in Congress. While on C-SPAN, this is what Carol Anderson had to say about how gerrymandering affects voters. What gerrymandering does is it depresses the vote because it demoralizes people because they think the system is rigged and their vote won't count. Okay, but I've heard that other Republican states gerrymander too. Like, for example, North Carolina, which had more people move than even Maryland without any changes in the number of districts. It wouldn't even matter for Maryland because we're a majority blue state. That's a very fair argument, but still, it doesn't make gerrymandering right. I agree, but in states like Maryland that, in the 2020 election, voted 66% in favor of Democratic candidate Joe Biden, gerrymandering would still have no effect on the makeup of the state. Regardless of the majority, 32% of Marylanders still voted for Trump and voted red, so gerrymandering must have an effect in Maryland if 32% of the state is Republican, yet only one district is red. The two numbers just don't add up. The district on the Eastern Shore, um, you know, they, they specifically draw the lines to make sure that all the Republicans, you know, are in that one district. So mm -hmm. District 1 includes the Eastern Shore, then it wraps around, covers part of Baltimore County and goes into Carroll County. Um, all Republican areas. That's a gerrymandering technique called packing, so you pack all the voters into, into one district. Republicans in Maryland are all in one large district, this being District 1. This is due to a common gerrymandering tactic known as packing, where the party in power packs 
a district full of their opposite party to eliminate that party's presence in other districts. Okay, but we need to stop this from happening in other states too. That's why it's crucial that the newly elected government in 2021 ensures every perspective on gerrymandering is heard, as well as that they should speak out against gerrymandering to push for the nation as a whole to limit the severity of gerrymandering. A plausible solution is creating nonpartisan districting committees that would oversee how states redistrict. Yeah, for Democrats and Republicans alike, bipartisanship is the way of the future, right? For dismantling gerrymandered districts in America as a unified nation, most definitely. Yeah.